Well, good morning and welcome to church. My name is Brad and I'm a pastor here at Blaney Community Baptist Church. So glad you're joining us this morning as we as we sing together, we pray and we um, look at God's word. So I'm just going to open us in prayer as we begin our service. So let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to to look at your word, to, to learn, to, to grow. Lord, I pray you'd give us open hearts and minds to hear from you. Lord, I pray that we'd be able to, to focus on you. And while we are not able to be in, in person and gathering right now as we, we sing, Lord, may, may our hearts and minds be able to, to focus on you. Lord, we thank you for your love and your care for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin with two songs this morning. We're going to sing a song called Hallelujah, followed by Jesus Messiah. So let's sing together.
Lord, you truly are Lord of all. We thank you for that. We thank you that you're our Lord, and that we can worship you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to continue to worship now by singing Hymn of the Savior. So let's sing together. From the chaos of darkness, your word shaped the earth, and your image a people made. But we traded perfection, truth for a lie, and your glory was veiled in shame. But a promise made, a blessing you gave. To a people of your name For this broken world A Savior foretold To bear all our grief and pain When the heavenly sea Ascended his throne, all my sin on his shoulders lay. And to win our redemption, he suffered and died for the sake of my guilt and shame. All the price he paid in taking my place, so that death was all. Once again, church. Again, my name is Pastor Brad. Glad you are joining us this morning. We're now going to take up our tithes and offering. And I know many of you already give online, but if you'd like to do so, the numbers, our account details are below as we can't take up an offering in person. Um, but I'm just going to pray as we do that. And I know sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind when we do it just by transferring from one account to another. So I just want you just to Kind of picture yourself giving this money to the Lord. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for how you bless us, Lord, how you meet our needs. Or do you think we thank you for providing jobs for us and providing um, income that we can meet our needs? Lord, we give a portion of it back to you so that we might be able to recognize you as our Lord, recognize that you are the one who has given us gifts and talents 
to, to earn this income. Lord, we pray that it would be used to further your kingdom. Lord, we, we give so that your message of, of grace might be preached to, to people who need to hear. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this week we, we got the great news for those who live in the, the Blaney Shire that our lockdown had ended. And at first it was very exciting for me as I thought, well, we'll be able to, to meet in person again this week. But as I um, looked more of the details and as I contacted Richard to get advice from, from the health department or from, from the hospitals and, and talked with the elders, and we found out that anybody who has been in Orange or Bathurst in the, the last 14 days is, is still in lockdown. I don't know many people in our church have been there for essential reasons, such as work or medical. And as a result, many in our church would not be able to be out of lockdown for church this week. So we have opted for this week and next to, to continue to have church online. And we're hopeful that in the, the weeks to come that we might see some of the surrounding areas, Orange and Bathurst, come out of lockdown as they, they seek to control the, the spread of the virus. Um, but we are looking forward to that day when we can gather together in person and, and worship. And I know some might be disappointed, but we will do that soon. We are now going to come to a time of prayer. And so Stu's going to be leading this morning. So over to you, Stu. Good morning, church. Wonderful to be with you this morning. Hope uh, you're in all well and uh, about to enjoy life out of lockdown. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you glory and honour for all that you're doing in our lives, every day. Even in times we can't see it or understand your ways. Shine your light in us, through us and over us. Help us to make a difference in this world. And in particular, in and around where we live. Help us to reflect your wisdom, peace and hope to those around us. We thank you that your ways and thoughts are far greater than ours. You had a plan to redeem and make all things new. You hear our prayers and know our hearts. You reign supreme. You are holy and just. Help us not to follow the voice of crowds, but to press close to you and hear your whispers to us. Forgive us, Lord, when our thoughts and desires do not align with what you want for us. In Jesus' name, forgive our sins and indiscretions towards you and others. When our thoughts wander, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to replace undesirable ones and fill us with your joy, wisdom and presence. Lord, bring peace, comfort and healing to those in our church who are struggling or unwell at this time. Lord, we thank you for Betty, that she's home and the doctors believe they have got all of her cancer and she's on good and correct medications. Lord, we thank you that the COVID situation has improved to the extent that we are out of lockdown and our congregation will able, be able to meet together to worship and support one another in person soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Stu, for leading us in prayer. Um, this week on Monday, I had what is called supervision. So many of you may or some of you know, some of you may not know that as part of my accreditation with the Baptist Churches of New South Wales, I'm required to do professional supervision in my role. So I do that um, every every couple months or every six six weeks, six to eight weeks. And so this week I met with my supervisor, and as we prepared for that, he sent me an email and asked me to think of an image. Think of an image of that would describe how I am right now. And so I immediately thought, not necessarily of a, a, a one picture, but a, of something that happened to with me in the, the week to gone by. So um, on, on a bit over a week ago, Abby and I had been riding bikes in Carcor. Beck and Elijah were playing tennis. And we were riding bikes in Carcor, and we, we ended up down at the Belobola River. And we, we got off our bikes, and we began to race sticks in the little rapids there. And while the rapids weren't quite as big as this photo behind me, 
we begin to, to throw them in. And because we've had a lot of rain, that there was a bit of a flow in there. We are racing these sticks down the rapids. And I don't know if you've ever done that before, but it was a lot of fun. We we kept doing it. And sometimes the sticks got stuck. Sometimes they, they, they would go on down. Um, but as we were doing that, I remember seeing these sticks. And as they go down kind of the fast parts, there's little what's called eddies. These sticks would get in that eddy and it just kind of go in circles and it wouldn't make it uh, wasn't able to go down the, the flow for a bit it was just kind of stuck there and over time it eventually got back in the flow and then in the kind of the smoother parts in between the the rapids where in the middle it was still flowing you could see it flow if your stick was in the middle it would go down the river um, but as it goes closer to the side it would come and it would actually start going back upstream on the sides because as the the water's flowing down the middle. The sides um, was allowing the water to kind of be sucked back up. And so obviously we wanted our sticks as we, we threw them in. We wanted them to stay right in the middle of the rapids and right in the middle of the river as it, as it went through the rapids. So that way we could come in first place. And uh, Abby had a really good way of making sure hers did good as anytime her stick got stuck going the wrong way or uh, in a little eddy, she just threw another stick in and said, this one's mine now. She'd throw it right into the, the, the middle of the flow. But as my supervisor asked me for this image, I, I remembered going with Abby last week and, and, and racing these sticks. And so my image that how I feel right now and, and, and the way I was seeing ministry at the time was I felt like I was in the river, I was that stick and I was wanting to be in the middle of the river, you know, flowing down, going down the flow. But instead I felt like I was floating right near the side and I was actually kind of stuck going the, going the wrong way. Or I was stuck in that eddy, just kind of going around in circles and not, not really going anywhere. And my desire is to be in that flow. And so that's kind of how I have felt sp specifically with, with church ministry. You know, I want to be in that flow. I want to see growth. I want to see new people coming. I want us to be able to share the gospel message with people who haven't heard. But in many ways, because of the lockdown, I feel like we're almost stuck. We're just waiting or we're even sometimes maybe going that wrong direction. And I'm, my desire is to be back in that flow. And the, the thing of, about it is, is if we focus on where, where we want to be in a, in a situation like now, we're, we're, you know, we're in lockdown, just come out of lockdown here in Blaney, but we, 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 we aren't able just to, to jump on that flow like normal. We're, we're in some ways stuck going along the side the, the wrong way or stuck in an eddy. We feel like we're, we're going around in circles. And so that's how I have felt. There's been lots of positives. I've been um, happy to chat with so many of you guys on the phone, call it you up. I'm happy to, to have been able to pass out some, some hampers lately and touch base with, with people in the community. So there's been some highs, but in many ways, I feel like church is just, just waiting, waiting to get back into that flow. And the good news is, I mean, as far as when we raise sticks, you know, that, those sticks float. So even though they're not floating down the river, they're, they're still afloat, which is good. And the church is, is afloat. It's going well. It's just, but it, we, because of our circumstances, what's going around, the season that we're in, it, it feels like we're, we aren't where I would like to be. And I don't know about you, but in, that might be how you're feeling in life. This, this lockdown, the, the COVID restrictions, and just the uncertainty of COVID can leave us kind of feeling like we're just um, stuck and we're, we're um, not going the direction that we would like. And so we, we discussed this in my, in my supervision and, and talked about it. It was a really positive thing to, to, to work through. And it, it inspired me to, to, to share with you my, my little parable, my parable from the book of Brad about the, the, the stick that was in the river and wasn't where it wanted to be, but it was going the wrong way. Well, I think there are many times, as I said in life, where we find ourselves not where we want to be, not in the direction that we, we thought we should go. We find ourselves 
in a place that can be difficult, can be hard. And so what, what can we learn from those situations? What can we learn from this season of, of COVID? And so I'd like to, to read Ecclesiastes um, chapter three, verses one through eight. And uh, I keep wanting to say, turn, turn, turn as I, as I read it, but I, I'll, I'll read it as it's printed in the Bible. So uh, Ecclesiastes three, one through eight, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So as you read through that. Uh, I was particularly, just even while I was reading at that time, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embrace. You know, we've been in a time where we're supposed to keep our distance from each other, but there are seasons in life. There are times for different things. We're not always going to be right where we want to be. And there's seasons of life where, where Unbeknownst to us, God has us there for specific reasons. And why, why has COVID happened? Why, you know, when I'm not the only pastor, only church, um, to feel like we are just kind of just floating, not not in the flow, not going where we want, not seeing growth, not seeing um, new faces, new people. I mean, I, I I do believe that we have seen, you know, growth within each of us as we've um, learned and grow. We've continued to meet and look at God's word together um, online. And so there's been opportunities for us to grow within. But as we, we look at where we want to be, we want to be a church that's not just about growing those who are in, which is, but that is a, one of our priorities. We, we also want to see that outward growth of, of sharing the gospel with people who need to hear. And so as we read through Ecclesiastes, there's a time, there's different seasons that we find ourselves in. And right now we find ourselves in that season, close to that bank, you know, not in the flow, not going where we want, and at times maybe feeling frustrated. And how many times have you been frustrated in the past you know, year and a half as, as you've been unable to, to plan or do the things you want, as, as the uncertainty happens, or you have a plan and then it has to be changed. And, and it just feels like we're just not going anywhere sometimes. We're just waiting, waiting for COVID to be finished, waiting for things to go back to normal. But yet we're in this season and the, the season can't be rushed. The season is for a, a time. And so there are, are things that we can learn while we are in this season. So I have specifically three things that I think we can learn when we are in this season or are in a difficult season. It doesn't, not just COVID and not, and I'm not just talking about for the church. I'm talking about us as individuals. I think the first thing we can learn as we are in this season is we can, that we are called to be content. So Philippians 4, verse 11 and 12, um, Paul says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in, in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, whether in lockdown or out of lockdown. So I, so I added the last part, but we are called to be content. We are to be content because our contentment shouldn't rely only on our outward circumstances. We are content because of who we are in Christ. We have a faith in him. And so while we find ourselves in a COVID season of life that, that really impacts our, our life 
for those of you with kids who've been doing school at home or daycare at home, those of you who don't have kids, perhaps whose kids are out, haven't been able to see them, haven't been able to visit with them apart from maybe doing it online or on the phone. We, we, we are in the difficult circumstances many times, but we are called to be content, to, 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 say, to see that we are in this season, we, we can't rush it. And I, I, I think about contentment, and I think about how when I was a child, you know, when I was young, what did I want? Oh, you know, I can't wait until I'm 13. I'll be a teenager. I don't be so old. And, and I, I think of all the things I could do. And then what happens? You, you get to 13. Oh, I can't, can't wait until I get my license and I can drive and think of all the freedom I have. And then you get to that. Oh, I can't wait until I'm an adult. I can't wait until I'm 18. And I can't wait till I'm done with school. I can't wait till I've got a good job. I can't wait till I have a car. There's there's so many things that we, we in life, we think, oh, I can't wait until. And, you know, if you ask somebody who's older, they don't want to be older usually. They, they would rather be younger. But we can't change life's um, what the speed that life goes at or where we are in life, that's, that's what it is. But we are called to be content. And just like a child, it's not helpful for them to always be looking towards that next thing and never being happy or content with where they are. In the same way, we, we are in this season and I and we need to be content in this season and, and recognize that while it may not be, I'd much rather be in that flow, moving down the river and where it's more exciting, going down rapids. This is where God has me. This is where God has our church. And this is where God has you. So we are called to be content in these situations. The, the second thing I think we can learn is that, that nothing in life is a waste. God is continuing to work in you. He's continuing to work in me. He's continuing to work in our church during this time. And to, to put it um, maybe it's more succinctly, you still have a job to do. You know, you're, you, you're still called to be a husband, a, a wife, a, a friend, a parent, um, a child, a, a student. We still have things that we are called to do at this time. And while it may be affected by, by COVID, we, we are still called to be a child of God, seeking to grow, seeking to serve him, seeking to, to rid our life of things that, that don't please God and, and replace it with things that are honoring to him. So we, we have a, a job to do. Life isn't just on hold. We there are ways that we, we can continue to, to improve and grow during this time. So we're not just here saying, okay, I'm just going to wait for things to come. We, we have a job to do. I thought of a, a couple Old Testament examples of this. When I, I think of somebody who had a lot of time to wait. Think of Noah when he was on the ark. You know, he was... Here he is, he gets on the ark with all these animals, and he's stuck on this ark. Nowhere to go. That's the ultimate lock-in, I suppose. He he was stuck on that boat for for you know, if you as you unpack Genesis for, for an entire year, not just the 40 days and 40 nights of rain, but with the flood and allowing the, the drying for a year. And that's a long time. And but during that time, he would have definitely had plenty of jobs, plenty of stalls to muck out, plenty of, of animals to feed and, and other things to do on that ark. So he had a job to do. He would probably much rather have been, been out of the ark. Well, not during the flood, but he'd not have been not wanted to be stuck there. But that was a time. It was a set time. For, but he was on the ark and he had things he needed to do. I think of Joseph, the, the men's. Um, Bible study has been looking at, at the life of Joseph. And, and Joseph, here he was, at part of his life, he had been falsely accused, and he was stuck in, in prison. And he was just stuck there. He wanted to get out. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he found himself in prison. And he might have felt stuck. What is God doing? But God was using that period to prepare him for what was going to come next. It was a, a period of preparation. 
Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I don't know, sometimes this verse is used to, to kind of try to get us to get our head in the right space when really bad things are happening. But I, I, I think that even just, you know, COVID in a lot of ways is really bad, but, but for most of us, it, it's, it's, has been mostly an inconvenience. It hasn't been a real convenient thing to have. And so we, these season of, of COVID, what is God doing with this season to, to work in your life? What is God doing to, to change how you are, change your, you know, maybe your priorities, change your focus? We've, as a family, we've had much more time to spend together. And where sometimes that is really positive, sometimes we, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of separation, but we, we've, we've valued that time as a family so there are are positive things that come about and god is working through um COVID. he's working through the things that go on in our lives but if you're going through a difficult time whether for for health reasons for other things god is using that to to um shape us make us into be more like him and so nothing is a waste this period this last year and a half we were not it's not just something that we should just say oh you know that was just a waste because it was not a waste we still have a job to do we still have a relationship with god to grow in we still have people around us family friends who we can impact and and show what it means to live faithfully so this is not a wasted time just because we're in that right near the bank going the wrong direction in life it doesn't mean that we it's just wasting god's using that and he's going to prepare us for for what comes next in the life because sooner or later if you if you know as abby and i were, were behind or standing beside the that little the Belabla river the the that stick would eventually come back into the flow and, and make it back down the river. So eventually that will happen. We get back in. The, the third thing I think we can learn during this time is that the Lord plans our paths. So the Lord is in control. He's planned this for us. We, we find ourselves where we are because the Lord has, has plans for us. And I am to submit to his ways, submit to what he has for me. And, you know, so I, I submit to, to being in this season, to, to leading this church in this season, to, to go through the, the, this season for, that I believe is for a purpose, that God's working for a purpose. Hebrews 12, 1, um, and two says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fitting our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Notice how it says the race marked out for us. So it's not just to where we could just go wherever we want. The race is marked out for us. And we are to run that race where God is leading and directing. Part of the Olympics have um, these kayakers or, or canoers or, or um, going down these man-made rivers where they have a path marked out for them. I don't know if you watch Jessica Fox in any of her races, but as she was going down, It'd be so easy just to stay in that middle of that flow and as she paddles and just go straight down and she'd have a really quick time. But if she did that, she'd miss all these different spots that, that is planned for her, places that there was a path that is planned and she is required to go through a, a certain pathway. And in some ways, that is how our life is, just like. When those um, canoers go down, they have to go in and out of different places. And where they're on the sides, it's out of the flow sometimes. Sometimes they're, they're paddling up river to get through um, those markers that, that hang down. And, but that's the race that is set out for them. And they must do those things. 
And in life, our, our path, our race is set out by the Lord. And we are called to, to follow that, to, to follow the pathway that he has and follow his ways. And when we do that, we know that, that he's got a reason for that. There's a plan for that. And so my path is in the Lord's plans, and I submit to his ways. And I consistently pray, God, where are you leading? Can you, would you open me to, to go the way you want? And if that's my prayer, and if this is where he has me, then I am called to, to live there as, as best that I can, to, to live through this season of COVID and allow God to work in me. So uh, I went into my supervision uh, with that idea, feeling a bit stuck, feeling a bit like, okay, I'm, I'm in an eddy, just going around, what, or maybe I'm beside the river, kind of you know, caught on the flow the wrong way and wanting to get back into the flow. As I left my supervision, I, I felt uplifted and recognizing that God is in control. He had his plan for me. And I am called to, to walk in that plan. In this season of life, this COVID season, this, you know, we've been in lockdown where some of us are out, some of us, you know, we don't know. As soon as we get a case, we might be right back in. But I guess I was left challenged. What is God doing right now? What does he want from me? How can I live the best I can in this season? Not you know, struggling to get out, struggling to get back into the flow when now this is where God has me, because we will get back into the flow. That that will happen. And and in life, you know, there's been difficult things we've gone through and then things go back to normal and we feel like we're back into the in the flow. But I want to use this time and sit and whatever God wants to accomplish in my life, whatever God wants to accomplish in the church, I don't want to miss that by constantly looking ahead. I want to be content where I am, knowing that I'm not just wasting away, waiting for life to get back to normal, because the Lord plans my path. He's planned your path. So I don't know how you're feeling. If you feel stuck, if you feel like life is a big eddy where you're going around in circles and circles, really going nowhere. But what is the Lord doing? What is the Lord trying to show you and teach you during this time? And if we focus on that, then this time can be productive. This time is a preparation for when we jump back into that flow. And we see as a church, we see new faces. We're ready to disciple and, and witness and welcome them in. We, we've been prepared. So what is the Lord doing in your life to prepare you for what's next? Let's pray. Father, I, I just pray for anyone listening today who might feel stuck. Lord, as I kind of did at the beginning of the week, as I, I thought or what, how I was feeling right now, I, as far as at least church-wise, Lord, that I was feeling stuck. I don't know, many people might relate to that. Life just seems like we're in a holding pattern. We're not really going anywhere. Lord, we thank you that you are in control. Lord, I, we thank you that we still have things we can do. We still have life to live to the fullest for your glory, even if it's limited by restrictions of COVID. Lord, I pray that we would be content, content with where we are, content with this season. And Lord, not consent just to be the same. Lord, we want to grow and we want to see more, but a contentment of the season that you have placed us in. Lord, I pray that you would be preparing us to get back in that flow. Lord, for to seeing new things, for seeing growth, the excitement that happens when we're um, in the flow of the river. Lord, we know that you are in control and we submit to that. Help us to navigate these times in a way that is honoring to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to continue our service by singing No Other Name, so let's sing together. There 
Thank you for joining this morning. So glad you were here with us. Uh, I have a question for you as you go out. So this question we'll be discussing a little bit here in a few minutes as we as we gather on Zoom. So we'd love to have you join us on Zoom. But if you don't join us, if there's someone else in your house that watched the service with you or someone you can talk with, um, give a, a ring. Your question to answer is, what has God taught you during this season or what are some things that you are grateful for during the COVID times? So there has been some positives and there are some things that the Lord's doing in our lives. So what are those things? So if you want to think about that, maybe discuss with um, whoever you watch this service with within your family or give someone else a call or join us on Zoom. But have a wonderful week and we will see you next week. God bless.